Hey everyone, it's Will Kern from Endless Events. I'm joined by Roger Leaner. Roger is in charge of a huge part of the operations and in charge of the Green Squad here at IMAX America, where we are recording this now. And Roger has some jam-packed tactical tips for how you can start to implement sustainability in your events to start pushing forward a lot of the things we're talking about in our other interviews, the big things, the things that we, need, we know we need to be doing. You're gonna tell us how we do it. Roger, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I want to dive really quickly into the nitty gritty. You guys are doing so many amazing initiatives here at IMEX. For example, this year you guys are working really hard to get rid of all single use plastics. Uh, in our video studio, we're not allowed to have any single use plastics, so we're all using reusable water bottles. You guys are famous for pretty much almost eradicating tchotchkes across the board at this giant exhib exhibition. There's so much stuff you guys do. You guys are such a leader. And I, I, I literally am fangirling in a little ways right now Thank about you. all the awesome stuff that you get, you do. But I want people to know, you know, they see so much of what you've done, they think, I can't do that. So let's start to give them a couple ideas for what they can start to implement today to start bringing a, a more sustainable effort to their event, no matter the size. So let's start off with what you think the first one is that people can implement today and small steps they can make towards being more sustainable. So um, for me, the first thing is always just if you think it's overwhelming, just start with one thing. I mean, that's that's one of the main messages. Um, one thing that everyone can do is um, put out water stations and ask their attendees to bring their own bottle with them so that you can um, save on single use materials. That is, I would say, a very good one to start. Another thing that you can do is think about all the collateral that you might do for your event. So this time um, we don't do any um, uh, swag bags anymore because people get them from exhibitors anyway. So why do we need to produce more of them? Totally. Almost looking at like, what are all the things that get left in the hotel room at exactly. the end of the conference and saying like, let's not do that in a, again. Um, so when it, when it comes to communicating, you guys have probably learned a lot about this this last year about the single use plastics. What's the best way to communicate that and to push for that initiative of getting rid of single use plastics? It's really important that you actually talk to your stakeholders. So wherever you have plastics in your operations, it's important that you, you approach them well in advance and you listen to their concerns because there might be certain reasons they might have supply chains in place there might be reasons why they use a certain material over another so don't try to do everything at once just do little steps and just count on the support of your stakeholders as well we we put out the message to say this is where we want to go and all our partners here at the venue and from the service contractor, they just go with it and they come up with their own ideas. Look, we can do this, we can do that. That's really important that you say you want to do it and, um, and have them on board with what they can do because they know best what's possible um, and what might just take a little bit more time and you save it for next event, next year, whatever. I love that. So really relying on your, your team as a whole, you know, your contracted services, your, you know, your extended team, your marketing team, um, rather than trying to be like the one person do doing it all, bring everybody involved. And I love that. What sort of um, ways do you think that you can encourage them, um, let's say for example, your suppliers, since there's so many suppliers that come into an event, um, to have them push forward these initiatives? Is it something like, do you have a meeting and all hands on deck where you say, hey, start thinking about this? Do you request that part of the RFP process that they do? I'm curious like what you think the best uh, best practices are when it comes to that communication. Um, it obviously depends where you are in your cycle. So if you're already in a contract, it's never too late. Don't think just because you haven't put anything into your contract or in your RFP, you can't make it happen. Just start the conversation. But the, the, the most foolproof version is definitely to put it into the RFP to say it's important to you and you have to comply with these and these points or even make it open to say we want to have a sustainable event tell us how we can make this happen together. So that's definitely RFP stage 
well, it's the best way That's to awesome. do it. I love it too because then, then yeah, that, that way, if it's important to you, you're gonna make it a requirement, right? Versus like trying to tack it on. Because I can see a lot of, of us trying to do this when we are um, already yeah knee deep in the event, and then the spotter says, "Oh no, I'm too busy doing this. Oh, that's just a headache. I'm getting annoyed by it." But if you make it part of it, you're gonna find the partners that align really, really well with it too. Um, oh my gosh, I'm like. I'm running with so many questions. Let's jump in again to tact tactical things that people can do. So they, they've started to, um, you know, make sure that's part of their bid process. Um, we've started talking about communicating to all your attendees, doing small things like single-use plastics, um, things like, for example, uh, eliminating the, the collateral. What sort other short tips do you have for everybody when small steps they can take to implement these? Um, so one thing that people can do for their events is definitely some sort of certification. So um, we are doing the EIC sustainable event standards and um, that really gives you kind of a, a very broad approach to look to for to look for ideas what what you can do and the real benefit of the standards is that you you don't have to like do everything it gives you a good um, yeah a, kind of like an overview of ideas to to work on and you can you can start with a few and then once you've done a few you go to the next ones and so on but that will give you kind of a, a structure to work on and the good part there is also that does include your suppliers so that has um, documentations for your suppliers as well to make sure that they know for for AV for example for catering what does it even mean um, to be sustainable? And then you can work through these um, through these points with them. I love it, and it's the D E I C. Um, e I C Events oh, Industry the Council. Right. So, okay, perfect, yes. awesome. And th they have this framework that we can. Is it free for anyone? To literally, just go on the site and download it and know what yeah. to do. Yeah, um, it works through the um, sustainable events um, guidelines. Okay. So there's a. A pre-step if you really want to start from from the beginning it's almost like a pledge so you, you it, um, it's a bit a ritual so you pledge I'm going to be sustainable and running sustainable events in the future and then you can look at the standards and and start implementing them I love it I love it, it it's crazy because we don't realize that the, like I didn't even know this all existed that you can easily implement what you're, you're doing um, what other sort of low-hanging fruit is there out there for everybody um, that they can just nab on to um, any resources that you think that people need to be paying attention to or looking at when it comes to the sort of stuff um, can't really think of any particular resources. Just follow sustainability in in the media in general to see what are current topics that are um, important. Um, one thing that we definitely look into very very deeply is circular economy, because to to kind of reduce waste in uh, in our industry is something that we just need to make happen Absolutely. and soon. So circular economy is a is a very good. Um, information source to follow as well. Cool. I love it. I love it. All right. Roger, is there anything else that you think our audience needs to know when it comes to making their events more sustainable? One thing that's very important is that you actually tell people that your event is sustainable. Um, and just make sure that you, you tell them at every single point. So don't just have like one card on your website that lists your sustainable initiatives. You have to actually catch people where they are. So for example, on the menus, you can you, you can have logos of locally sourced or low carbon impact items, things like that, where where people actually have a direct connection to to how sustainable something is. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I, and I think too, when you start to say it's sustainable, you feel that it's almost a self fulfilling prophecy. You say, "Oh, we're a sustainable event." Well, now you, if you do something like you, that's bad, you know, everyone's gonna be watching. Everyone's like, "Oh man, you're a sustainable event, and you're, uh, you know, using single-use plastics." You're gonna very, very quickly want to uphold that own standard that you have, right? Um, I, I've started to ask you this, I think, before the camera, but I do think it's really, really interesting is what sort of things do you think we have to look forward to the future when it comes to the sustainability? What sort of things matter that people need to be on the horizon that they need to be thinking about now for their next event? Um, so one thing which really is imp um, has big fruits for us is catering. So um, through, your, through your meal choices, you can actually have a very, very big impact. And um, red meat is 
we all know it a little bit a culprit and no one says you have to become a vegetarian or a vegan but just think about maybe once or twice switching out your red meat for a meat free alternative and the impact that you can have to to help combat climate change is actually very very large that's awesome and you guys have made a huge initiative here when it comes to that and some something I think that this might be the first time that it gets announced uh, and you guys got some stats I think like last night on how it's been used you actually have a partnership with impossible to have an impossible burger here which is a, a meat replacement um, and you have some news I think that I want to let you share because it's really cool yes so the the sands our venue here so they managed to source impossible burgers for us and from the first day at IMAX this year um, nearly 50% of all burgers that were sold were actually impossible burgers. Wow! And I think one, one way how that was possible as well is because the impossible burger was actually the first item on the menu. So it wasn't your classic, this is your beef, this is your turkey, and then there's the vegetarian option. The menu starts with the impossible burger as the first option. Wow, that's so smart because, yeah, you, normally you see a burger and then it says up in fine print you can replace a turkey or chicken or, you know, or veggie patty. But if it maybe is the, the impossible burger and it says or you can replace it for beef for an extra dollar or maybe less dollar, whatever it may be. That's so smart, like how it defaults to that. I'm definitely going to take that away and employ that at my events right away. That is so awesome. And congratulations, you guys. That is an amazing statistic. Um, I mean, I'm going to see, I'm excited to see in the future if we can get to like 95 98% adoption with that, and I think that's going to be totally possible. Uh, no pun intended, for sure. <laughs> what, is there anything else that you think that we have to look forward to in the future? Um, so much. There's so, there's so yes, much. <laughs> we, th there are so many things as well that if you just walk around the event, you don't even see, because we, we are really committed to like look into the small things as well. So one thing we're looking at always is just the materials that the show is like build out of absolutely like the physical boards and exactly so these and ones and we have managed to read um to read even take not even single use plastic but take all plastic out of some of these materials already but we continue to work on that to just take plastic maybe one day c completely plastic free at all so not not just single use but completely plastic free. Amazing, amazing. Uh, what an amazing future uh, to have. So obviously there's tons of resources on the MPI website to be able to learn about sustainability. But Roger, where else can people go to find more about what you guys are working on? Anything that you want to share with the audience for them to go check out what you guys are working on your sustainability efforts? So we pro um, publish a sustainability report for all of our events, um, which are on our website. And that is a really good resource for people to just see um, yeah, what they can do, what we do here, and what they can do at their own events. I love it. Leading by example and letting everyone know, hey, you attend the event, you can see how we do it, so you can do it as well. I love it, Roger. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank Always you. a pleasure to see you. Thank you. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.